Progressive presents Mind Flowness with Flow. Before you lie is a beautiful meadow. In that meadow, Progressive Direct has placed its auto insurance rates alongside those of competitors. You select the lowest rate and feel a great sense of calm. A great sense of calm. Compare Progressive Direct rates with competitors' rates so you can rest easy. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Because we don't understand how life formed, it is difficult to estimate this probability. The likelihood of a complex molecule like DNA being created by random collisions of atoms in a primordial ocean is fantastically small. In an infinite universe, it would happen in some places, but they would be very far apart. If we want to find advanced intelligent life, our best bet is to listen for radio signals. Look up to the stars and the forest that surround. Do you see them? Do you hear them? Are they there? SpacedOutRadio.com presents S4 with Forest Moon Paranormal's Eric Cooper and friends. Also, take the time to join the Forest Moon Paranormal Facebook group. I knew I should have made a left turn in Albuquerque. Space travelers, it's time to go live on S4 with Eric Cooper. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to S4 with Eric Cooper, broadcasting live from the beautiful mountains of concrete, Washington. And now, without further ado, your host, Forest Moon Paranormal's own, Mr. Eric Cooper. Hey, good evening, s 4 How are we all doing tonight? It's been a very busy day at Forest Moon Paranormal. We had three boots on ground cases with an additional three astral cases, so we are tired tonight. Um, but it's all good. We're on S4 tonight. Um, so we are a part of the KTLK FM, the Fringe family. So if you aren't familiar with KTLK, the Fringe, go check them out. And Spaced Out Radio, our affiliate, www.spacedoutradio.com, airs live 9 p.m. to midnight Pacific Standard Time, midnight Eastern Standard Time, every night, Monday through Sunday. And without further ado, 
The views and opinions of S4 do not reflect that of the KTLK, The Fringe, or Space Scout Radio. We are our own voice. So tonight, we are talking 2017 Paracon. And we're going to make it a little bit different than we did on Space Scout Radio last night. Because, I, I, yeah, we have a lot of the same listeners, but a lot of new listeners. So we are going to mix it up a little bit. We still have the speakers talking about what they're going to uh, lecture on. But we're going to talk about what it takes to make a Paracon and what the future of this Paracon is. So how y'all doing? So now we have our Keith Andrews, we have Dave Scott, we have Corey Ruiz, and we have Eric Markham. So how y'all doing? Hi, everyone. Good evening. So, you know, and what we did today, Corey, I know damn well is exactly what we're going to be talking about at Paracon, and that's paranormal validation. And we did that to a T on all three cases. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. Uh, We used probably the best of all three worlds. You know, we had a medium, uh, we had technology, and we had an astral team working with us all at once. And it was very easy to, in fact, much quicker uh, to find, validate, and remove issues. I mean, we're talking, so the first case, um, that's what team went through. Now, let, let me explain. In, in, in two weeks, because there's probably not going to be a show next week because we're all going to be tired and beat from Paracon. But in two weeks, we'll we are wrong. doing an astral show. Oh, God, yeah. But, but in two <laughs> weeks, we are going, we're going to do an astral show. We're actually going to bring in the astral team, and we're actually going to discuss how the astral is effective with working on a paranormal case. And so you're going to hear from the team in a couple weeks. Um, But it went really well today in that, so we got to the client's house, and we sent the medium through first. She came back, she looked puzzled, because she knew something was there, but she couldn't identify it. So Corey and I went through with the EMF meter. High readings all around. And what was it, like 110 at the attic, wasn't it? No, more like 130. Yeah, it was a high reading all the way through. Now, bear in mind, if you have a, a like a house with old wiring, and we always look at that, um, you're going to have high readings. But this was high readings uh, in certain spots of this house. So we went back outside, I, uh, and, and I asked the client about the attic. He had never been in the attic, so that kind of, well, there's nothing up there electronic that's going to interfere. So, so I called the astral team. They're already there. And had them ask them to go check out and focus on the attic. Well, there was an entity, a very nasty entity up in the attic. So that validated... And and what the medium said was she sent something running to hide or something running away. So the Astro team picked it up, removed it, and 20 minutes later we go back in, all EMF readings are back to normal. I'm sorry if it was an electrical issue, those readings would have still been the same. That, what you call folks, is perfect validation with all three aspects of our team. Um, And it was the same thing with the other case. We aren't going to get into details, but the other case was a bit more dramatic, but we still cleared it. And unlike other teams that sit there and argue and bitch and moan about, oh, if you, you, there's no investigation that takes uh, less than 24 hours of bullshit. We clear a a case usually within an hour. So, (laughs) uh, yeah, so how did we do today, Corey? I would give us a gold star. I think we went in, we did the job very quickly, we made some uh, clients very happy, uh, and at the end of the day, you know, we were tired as heck, but we did our job right. Exactly, and something actually tried to follow us, which the astral team again zapped, and cloaked, and, yeah, and cloaked us, but uh, also something tried to attach to us, 
And uh, that was also validated by the fact that as I'm hearing that there's something at Franco attached to all three of us, uh, our medium all of a sudden got nauseous. And it's not psychiatric because the medium had no clue what was going on. She just knew all of a sudden she got nausea. And that's part of uh, the symptoms of an attachment. And once the attachment was verified that it was cleared, the nausea went away. So, you know, it's cool when you have a medium on site, the astral team, which I'm in communication with, telling me what's going on that they see, the medium, what she sees, and your technology that's verifying everything. That right there is exactly what Mark was going to talk about with the scientific aspect for paranormal validation. And on that note, Markham, you excited about Paracon? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> I really am. <clears throat> I'm, and... I'm not really looking forward to the drive. <laughs> no, actually, I am. I, you know, I, I'm actually... <laughs> I'm looking forward to I'm just looking forward to the whole thing. I really am. Uh, we're looking forward to you getting here because you ain't going to want to leave. I pretty <laughs> much already figured that out. I'm, I'm already thinking of alternatives, you know, maybe renting the place I own here in Winston out. And I don't know. The main thing, the, the main thing keeps me in this area is both of my parents are in their 80s. And right now they're doing fine. They're living independently, but I don't want to be that far. You know, I can be there in two and a half hours if I have to be where, right, right. where I'm at now. And I, I think I need to stick around here for them right now, but I can foresee not in, you know, in the next 10 years or so, uh, transplanting myself out there. I've always wanted to go out there. So. This will be my first trip, and I am so looking forward to it. Well, they they do make a thing called an airplane. Hmm? <laughs> Said they do make a thing called an airplane. They make a thing called an airplane. Yeah, that's not going to work for you know. Well, that's not one of those things that you can. I can't afford my own. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about if there's a medical emergency. I'm going to want to get where I need to go. Quick. Okay, and, and and what do you uh, what do you anticipate with your presentation? Um, are, are you interactive? Are you a lecture? Uh, uh, I what, 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 started. What the... I started out. I started out lecture, and and thank God, uh, just some little voice said, "Nah, this you're just going to bore the hell out of people." So I went into sort of a mixture of make a speaking point, engage the audience. You know, I'm, I don't want to just sit there and be like the teacher on Ferris Bueller. You know, <laughs> just, I want to get the people stimulated and involved in my presentation. I want them to ask questions about things that I haven't thought of. I am so looking forward to that question that's like, whoa, I didn't think of that. You know, wow, thanks. You know, that... You know, I'm go I'm looking at it. Okay, this this will be my first public speaking thing since college. Okay, this is my heard? first. Mm, not yet. I have a feeling <laughs> as it. You know, right now it's this abstract. Oh, in a week, a week from tonight, I'm gonna. Well, by this time, I'll probably be toes up. But <laughs> by you know. I'm thinking, you know, that that's a week down the road. I haven't had time, you know, think about it and, or dwell on it, but I'm sure as the miles while away and I get closer and closer to concrete Washington, it'll be like, oh, crap, this is for real. I'm, I'm really going to do this. <laughs> and I know Dave, Dave has to be nervous. Nervous about what? Speaking and nah. beard tugging. No. <laughs> well, there, the, well, put it this way: I, I, I was practicing tugging my own beard just to prepare for, you know, gotta get, <laughs> get, gotta get the fingers in shape to tug your guys's beard. Now, you know what? I gotta say, uh, I actually Coop wrote my blog tonight, which will go out on Monday at spacedoutradio.com about how excited I am about being a part of your conference. 
And it's so interesting because it, it really is a highlight to my year. It really is. And I'm very thankful my, my for the uh, very thankful for the opportunity to, you know, be a part of it with you and to see some good friends and hopefully make some new ones like I did last year with Corey. And, you know, that's the beauty of a Paracon like this. It is so relaxed and just so much about friendship and coming together. I mean, we talk so much on the air about these two words, para-unity. Well, when you're down at Coop's conference, well, down for me, up for most of you, <coughs> excuse me, that's really what it's about. It's about para-unity. It's about sharing some stories, sharing some laughs, and really coming together to share some new ideas. And, you know, it's good people all around. And to be able to be the closing speaker for the second year in a row, I, I'm very humbled and thankful that I have that opportunity to do so with you. Indeed, indeed. And uh, real quick, so uh, the champ is asking if SG and Russ Wells will be here. They're going to be here as visitors. Uh, they just want to come and observe and, and, and mingle. And they'll be at Paracom, but they're not doing lectures. They're not being. They're not doing workshops. Uh, they they just got back from a long trip down south, and they're moving back up to this area. So, yeah, they'll be here, but they won't be doing anything interactive with Paracom. Um. So, what are you lecturing about, Dave? Well, my lecture or speech is going to be a little bit of a contradiction. And it is going to be titled, I Hate the Paranormal. And I realize it's a little bit of a, of a harsh title, considering what I do on a nightly basis on Spaced Out Radio. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I don't really hate the paranormal. There are <gasps> just... No, I don't. I actually do like it. It's just, you know, there are certain things about it that that drive me absolutely batty. And, you know, this is such an incredible field with some incredibly bright researchers in it. Yet, I've never been involved with a, with a field or an organization or a genre that continually shoots itself in the foot. And everybody mm -hmm. in the meantime continues to be seeking or yearning for credibility in their research. And so I'm going to touch on that a little bit. And then I'm going to, about halfway th through, bring it all together as to why I love the paranormal and how we can get better and stronger. So I know the title has a very negative connotation to it, but I really don't mean that for anybody else. Okay, and Dave, Dave you're uh, you're fading in and out a little bit. Yeah, I I know. I I just read that. I'm on the chat room too. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. You know, but I mean, I look forward to it, and our speech is going to be very, very interactive with people. It's going to be very, very, you know, picturesque because. I'm going to be bringing the audience, much like we do when we are on the air with you every night, we try and get the audience involved. And that's what I'm going to try and do during the speech as well, because I really like having a an open forum with people. And that is the entire goal, is to have that open forum, so that way people can interact much like they do during the show. But one thing else that I'm going to try here, guys, and I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to put my speech on my, on my Facebook at Facebook Live. And then what we're going to try and do is, if somebody can monitor, monitor it for me, like I believe, uh, Markham, you filmed my, my last one. But if somebody from whoever is watching it on Facebook Live wants to interact with a question or anything during my speech, we're going to try and make it interactive for them as well. So we're going to try something a little different. Well, okay. I'm going to try to get a wireless password uh, from the school district. Uh, not guaranteeing anything, but we'll see what we can do about getting a wireless in there. And I know Mark was talking about getting a new uh, camcorder 
in his travels here. So we will, uh, one way or the other, be able to get this on video, and it will be up. Uh, I'll, I'll disperse it. It'll be up in the S4 uh, YouTube channel and other uh, other avenues. Uh, I'll get it today if you can put it up on his wall and the Spaced Out Radio uh, website. But we will get uh, our, our listeners that aren't in the area that can't make it to Paracon um, involved. So, yeah, Keith, are you uh, are you excited about getting uh, getting down here? You know, in all fairness, I'm excited. I've got my own trepidations about it, but then there's a lot of reasons for that. But it's going to be a very interesting weekend. You know, I mean, one thing I'm definitely looking forward to, I am really looking forward to getting to meet all you guys. You know, I've spoken to all of you over the, you know, over the uh, year, well, Dave, the last couple of years, right? And I know where where the Paracon is concerned, the interaction with the people, and especially from what I from what I gather about concrete, the energy that's in that place is going to be something bizarre to deal with. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, and for, for for the for the listeners that didn't hear the show last night, uh, concrete <clears throat> is one over a hundred years old. It was designed as a concrete manufacturing plant. Uh, it, it is is what the city was built around it, and they built the concrete, the cement. It was originally called Cement City, and they actually made the cement for all the dams in Washington State. And so on that, there's a lot of uh, disasters that have happened up here. And the city burnt down, I believe, in 1910, I think, is around the area that it happened. And they rebuilt it. Uh, So you've got got a lot of disaster. The city itself was built on a crystal quartz quarry. And you got two rivers that intersect, and which is also an energy drop. So you take all those factors, you've got one hell of a, uh, a paranormal town, not counting all the Bigfoot uh, sightings and interaction in this mountain range, all the UFO sightings in this mountain range. And it, it makes the perfect intersection for a paracon. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, so, from my way of looking at it, it's going to be something something rather extreme, and especially with everybody being hyped up about it to start with. Exactly, exactly. And uh, what are you what are you lecturing on? I'm going to be talking about the about the offworlders or the UFOs, if you will, about the how what brings them to earth what their involvement is about the not only about their involvement but really the why they're not stepping in to clean up earth but the long and the short of it is we're going to be talking about the various races their individual roles and the long-term issue of what happens when they finally show you know why haven't they shown already you know, this issue of full disclosure and what we're looking at down the road when when we actually become part of the Galactic Consortium, part of the the much larger universe than what mankind already is, at least mm-hmm. as far as we generally know. But I'm oh. fully intending on engaging the the entire audience in it. Because that's what this is about, is getting the people talking, not just coming to hear me or coming to hear any one of the individual speakers. Oh, and I'm, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of questions. And uh, uh, if I remember right, uh, you're bringing up uh, the different spacecrafts that they fly and who flies what, correct? That is correct. Good, good. Uh, that, that's my interest. I get that a lot. Who flies the triangle? Who flies the orb? Who flies the cigar-shaped craft? Uh, I get that all the time. And I always refer them to our Keith Andrews. <laughs> uh, if I can keep some of the heat off you, then I can answer it. But uh, I, some, of the, some of them I don't know. I, I know, for example, the longer cigar is the, is the Epsidian. Uh, and I've learned that from you. 
Um, I, I've, you know, I, I've learned some of the craft from you, but I don't know all of them. And that would take a book. And I believe you're you're working on your book. I'm, you know, I'm in the process you, of working on the book. Yeah. You know, what's funny is I was actually asked that question by a friend of mine just about four or five hours ago. Mm-hmm. If I knew that, so I'm very interested in learning that as well, Keith. <clears throat> it's a That's... common question. Pardon? It's a common question. I mean, and I like that to be in part of the GPI training as far as, uh, you know, if you have an abductee and they've seen the craft, um, what do we know which race is abducting you? Uh, the, you know, that would be an awesome way to answer or an awesome answer for someone. Uh, you know, it comes up all the time. Oh, it really does. And, you know, it also has the it's got that aspect of it of making it a little bit more if you will, I don't know if this is good or bad, real for the people that are getting caught in this. You know, if you can put Mm -hmm. something that you can put your finger on. Like when you guys go in and and do an investigation and you you can say, here is what you're dealing with and here's how to cope or here's what you can expect. It makes it so much easier. Exactly, exactly. And, and, yeah, you know, in the Army, we have tank identification. We have helicopter identification. <laughs> we need to have a UFO identification class. And and uh, I love the fact that you're working on that because that'll, that'll answer a lot of questions, help us, like you said, with a lot of investigation. Uh, I, I don't even like the word investigation because we don't investigate, we clear. We solve problems. And that will help us solve problems. So on that regard, Perfect. And, and yeah, uh, you know, and Lem brings up uh, yeah, a trip in uh, PowerPoint, uh, a PowerPoint presentation with actual diagrams of what crafts look like would be great. And that would come be, if I had any idea how to use PowerPoint, that would probably help. I know how to use PowerPoint. Just give me the pictures and the information. I can do a PowerPoint presentation. I made one last year for UFOs, or a history of UFOs. I just need the information to plug in. Um, so let's see, let's see. So we, we also have uh, Mike Warren. He's doing uh, the haunting side. He's doing investigative techniques. He's also doing a workshop on the tools of investigation. And we have Christina George. They both could make it tonight. Uh, but Chris, yeah, Christina George is going to do alien abduction, the signs and symptoms, and she's going to bring in how the paranormal is all connected. So... That that is Paracon, and then of course VIP. We have Elizabeth Eglin coming in uh, as a VIP roundtable uh, presenter, and I believe you had two. Uh, were they actually going to be on the panel, or were they just coming to to visit, Dave? I got two members as uh, we're forming a team up here: uh, Corey Greaves and Kerry Mingo coming down with. Keith and myself, they are going to be just hanging out at the Spaced Out Radio booth, and they're going to be talking and interacting, but mainly it's a learning lesson for us as we look to put together a Paracon team up, or a paranormal team rather, up here, because when you're starting a team, there is a lot of do's and don'ts, and I want to make sure that whatever we do, we do it right the first time, because I think that's so important. Yes, there's going to be a lot of trial and error, but I think it's very important to learn techniques and spending time with Mike Morin and having Corey and Kerry spend time with him, along with learning from the crew from Forest Moon. I think it's going to be very, very good for all of us. So as much as this is about coming down for fun, it's going to be very educational for us as we look to get things going in 2018 up here. Okay, and, and Joe's bringing out, what are the chances of someone at the Paracom be abducted during the Paracom? Well, Joe, to the best of what we're doing, we will have tight security. Now, with that being said, security doesn't always isn't always able to stop an abduction. So I'm going to point that over to Keith. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> the, the thing is, is it possible? Certainly. Um. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say it was more likely, but I can tell you when we were at Experiencer Speak last year, um, frankly, there was an attempted abduction that we interrupted. 
you know, that, that we actually got in the way of and stopped from happening. So, you know, the thing you got to remember, and it's something that's very critical in my eyes, is we don't want people fearing, oh, if we show up at the Paracon, somebody's going to be abducted. Um, it would be far more interesting from my standpoint and a whole lot less less stressful for other people if instead of somebody being abducted like we had last year at the experience or speak we had somebody show up yeah oh yeah and abductions happen all the time it's not going to happen because we're doing a paracon uh not by any means uh the 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 thing i want with the paracon though is if you're being abducted show up so you can learn and we can help you that's that's the bottom line absolutely because there's a lot of conversations that happen outside of the meeting. You know, oh, God, yeah. I don't know about the, the rest of you guys, but I'm not expecting to get a whole lot of sleep on the on, on those two nights. No. <laughs> now, I want to I I bring Markham back in. Uh, Markham, so going by uh, our experience today, uh, are you going to address validation of the paranormal? I'm going to try. Yeah, I'm going to try because, you know, I don't want people to think I'm an expert paranormal scientist. I am a scientist with an interest in the paranormal and a desire to do legitimate research in it. And I did, there's just some, I'm trying to figure out where the two worlds can interact. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what I want to bring to the table is, you know, more surefire ways of validating the experience through science. I mean, we're told you can't trust our your eyes, but unfortunately, as human beings, you know, the normal six senses is what we got. And if you look at what we use as detectors, they're basically just extensions and you know, add-ons to our senses, you know, things that just enhance our senses a little bit. So I think the two worlds can match up. It's just a matter of getting everybody on the same sheet of music, finding out what works, what doesn't, and getting rid of the hearsay and getting some real documented stuff down. Good deal. Uh, Now, are you going to create a scientific protocol for paranormal teams? Yeah, I will. Uh, that's some, I don't want to do. That's something I think. I think that's something I need to sit down with paranormal teams and and work with them. I don't want to dictate from on high. Thou shalt to do it this way, you know. But I I right. do think that that I would. I think there's a, definitely an opportunity here to sit down. And, get with these groups because you know just in the last year and a half i've had since basically since i became involved with space out radio you know i used to think psychics and all that other stuff you know you couldn't verify was had no place in a paranormal team that it had to be all scientists and i have well between some of the things you know our guests have spoken to uh, my interaction with your uh, astral team at FMP and some other things, it's uh, no. <laughs> I can tell, you know, my approach was wrong and that, you know, you have to be willing to evolve and, and change. And that's one of the things that over the last year and a half I've come to realize that you don't go duck hunting without a laboratory retriever and I don't think you go ghost a psychic or some kind of sixth sense member of the team somebody you know that's got a foot in, you know maybe a, a foot in both worlds yeah, well having a medium and an astral team uh it makes me so much we we, we validated both 100 percent today and yeah that makes it so much nicer uh so we have a question coming in from bto So at the Paracon, will you video, audio, document the events and share any evidence? And will it just be ghosty? Jesus, much more. (laughs) So this Paracon is unique in that we cover all aspects of the paranormal, everything from abduction to Bigfoot to uh, the haunting and UFO and and ghost side. 
So, yeah, it covers all aspects of the paranormal. Um, and like I said earlier, it is going to be videotaped, and if we can work it, it will be Facebook Live. Um, now, as far as evidence, uh, you know, they might actually do an investigation of the hub, the local bar, Friday night. That That's up in the air. We'll see how that goes. Are they going to document? Uh, Mike Moore, I know, is bringing his equipment, so he will have, you know, equipment and, you know, I'm sure video and EMF and EVP material. So we'll see how that goes. And if there is evidence, then I'm sure they'll present it. Well, yeah, that's so, like a keystone of the whole GPI initiative is, you know, getting the evidence out there and getting it validated. You know, we're exactly. not going to be the kind of team that gathers up this stuff and then puts it in a hidey hole and, you know, it needs to get out there. Well, it does. Okay. You know, it, there are things that the that mediums and, and clairsentients can pick up that go beyond what modern technology picks up. Mm-hmm. But it's all got to be cross-validated. Exactly. exactly. It, it, it's not validated by just a scientist. It's not validated by just a medium. Um, it, it's got to be validated by all three, technology, media, well, two, medium and technology. We just happen to have three with the other. Um, so completely agree. Uh, now, now, Dave, so what do you think about paranormal validation? I think there should be a little bit more about it. And, you know, but this actually brings up a very good point because last week I released a photo. And I'm sure all of you out there may have seen the photo. If you haven't, you can go to my Facebook page or the Space Out Radio group and see it where I hold a paranormal tour up here. And one of our guests happened to just be taking random photos with her cell phone and caught a spirit very, very clearly on a stairway going up. And a lot of the things that I read in the comments from a lot of people really, really shook me because I'm all, I'm all for being skeptical. I'm all for being you know, someone who, you know, we have to validate this information. But how much skepticism is too much? How much validation is too much? I explained the scenario. I explained who was taking the photo. I explained absolutely everything to the best of my knowledge because I saw the photo about 15 minutes after. And Mm -hmm. I still had people coming out, that's a cutout, that's this, that's that. But here's what I figured. A lot of the people on my Facebook who were commenting on it, shall we say, in a, you know, in a overly skeptical, because I don't want to say they were skeptics. I want to say they were overly skeptical way. I could tell right then and there that they probably never listened to my show because if they had, they would know that I try and bring credibility to everything I do. You know, that's a selfish note and a selfish thing to say. Maybe some people say that's even a little arrogant. But at some point, when do we start believing the evidence? When do we start believing what people are out there? Not everybody is trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. I had people coming up to me saying, well, you got to go back and take other photos. Why? I already know the situation on the first one. Why do I need to expend a bunch of effort to prove it to you out there that it's real? When I already know it's a real photo. The people who were there know it was a real photo. We had four or five people who were in that group actually comment on the post. And people still didn't believe them. They were right there. And, and, and that is the downfall of the paranormal in that so many people fake evidence. And uh, I agree. When, when, when do you nitpick? When has nitpick gone too far? You see a valid video and everybody says, oh, it's CGI. And, you know, that's part of the GPI plan is we're going to have evidence technicians. 
that are going to be able to look at video and tell if it's CGI. Uh, you know, I learned something the other day. Uh, there, so there was a, a picture sent to me of a Walmart FEMA camp. And the individual that sent it to me wanted to know what I thought of it. Does it look valid? And I sent it to to our uh, photo analyst. And he pointed out some good points in that anytime you have a picture that is supposed to have moving parts, there should be motion. And that, you know, that's common sense, but that's what a lot of people don't look at. Well, in this particular picture was a Chinook. A Chinook is a double rotor helicopter. If you look at the picture, the Chinook had still rotors. Obviously Photoshop. But, you know, I, I look at it, I just say BS because, well, they're not going to, yeah, I, I didn't buy into it to begin with. But he brought up the good point that, yeah, you know, p- just looking at it based on the fact that the rotors weren't moving, uh, well, yeah, that's fo- a Photoshop picture. So we need good evidence technicians to either validate or throw out evidence. And then what you put up, if people know your background, they will know that you don't put up BS, you put up valid pictures for video. And, you know, there, there's so many YouTube channels out there that, oh, look at this. My, and, and like you say, Dave, opinion is fact. My opinion is, is fact. And, yeah, it's it's wrong. But so many people buy into it and fear monger over it. That's one of the downfalls and pitfalls of the, uh, the paranormal field today. And I know you're going to hit that. Well, I am going to hit it, but, you know, I think more importantly, the one lesson that I learned in regards to posting that photo online was the fact that I don't need to prove anything. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to prove. I already know it's real. I gave the right facts that would constitute it being real. I mean, we even had one person comment that it looked like an owl. You all saw the fo- photo. Did did that person or whatever it was on the stair look like an owl? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not at all. No owl Sorry. I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I didn't know that an owl could look like, you know, uh, the crow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Remember Brandon Lee and the crow? <laughs> I didn't know an owl oh, yeah. could look <laughs> like that. So the point that I'm getting at is... You know, at, at some point, you know, and, and this led me to, a, to a, a bigger question, guys. And I think this, this is a very important question. At what point are people saying, screw it, I'm not releasing the, of any photographs. I'm not releasing any more photographs. Where... You know what? We all say we we want that smoking gun video of a UFO or aliens or Bigfoot or or ghosts or whatever. Maybe that person or maybe that video, pardon me, exists. And the person Mm -hmm. who has it is not um, is not releasing it because of the way we treat that, because all of these so-called keyboard experts who don't know the scenario, who've never been to the building, who've never been to the area, who've never met the people involved, their first claim is guilty until proven innocent. Right? Well, like Stanton right. Friedman always calls it, you know, research by proclamation. They don't have any practical experience. Exactly. Well, it, it comes down to ego, ego and closed minds, and until we can get rid of some of that, it's going to be a problem. I, I fully agree, but at some point we have to stop criticizing and trying to debunk, and let's get to the fact that, you know what, a lady who was a very much skeptical person, who was only on the tour because her best friend wanted to go, caught an amazing photo. Why can we not accept that for what it is? Because that is the truth. And that's the problem that I have with the paranormal. I mean, when mm-hmm. you talk about my speech, yes, that, that will be in my speech. At what point do we start believing the evidence? Yes, I understand. 
understand. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Fool me a third time, I'm an idiot. I get that. I get that people have been shamed and fooled and everything along those lines. I do. I'm not trying to be naive about it. But at some point, when you know the facts, and I explained the facts, I think my credibility holds the facts. At least I hope it does. Okay? At some point, you just have to say, damn, that's a good photo. Rather than, well, I think you need to go back, and I need you to, I think you need to test the shutter speed on a camera on a tripod, <laughs> and at the and try and do it at the exact same time with the exact same lighting, and and you know do this and that. No, you know what? I'm going to go back there and investigate it because of, out of my own curiosity, I don't have anything to prove to anybody. If if people don't want to believe the photo, that's fine. I, I think my favorite one is everything is lens flare. Um, really? <laughs> yeah. No. And a, I'm kind of guilty know, of that. You know, when no, it comes I, to I, orb I, pictures, I'm kind of guilty of that because back in the old 35 millimeter film days, you know, I always, well, even now, I always have a Skylight 1B or a haze filter if for nothing else to protect the, the lens. Mm-hmm. And I used to get a lot of lens flare, you know, stuff like that. But guys, guys, how many times have we heard people complain, whether it's on this show, another show, online, on on forums, why are there no f- clear photographs? Guess what? We got one. We got one. And it's one. not good enough. <laughs> and it's not <laughs> no. good enough. You know, that's one of the things that's not going to be. Not anytime soon. You know, though, uh, people are simply put, they're afraid of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the if there's any way somebody can not discredit, but just simply disbelieve it, it's easier for people on the whole to disbelieve something, even when, well, uh, the best way I ever heard it put was was Spock's response out of Star Trek. And I know that's a, a movie from way back for most people, but when he said, when you remove all logical possibility, whatever is left, however illogical it may seem, is the answer. That's where people have to start looking, or at least start accepting the, the possibility of it. Well, the funny part about it was I had a guy who is a so I'm not going to mention his name, a so-called I don't want to use the term expert, but I'm going to use that word in this sentence on proving or disproving whether or not somebody caught true paranormal phenomena. And this guy is pretty credible. And he's like, well, I'm going to need a lot more than just your photo and your story to believe whether or not this is true. Have you got back, gotten back? Is there other pictures? Even went as far as saying, why did the person take the photo at that place? I said, she yeah. was taking, I said, she was taking random photos because on the tour, we encourage our participants to take random photos. So she just grabbed her, her camera phone. She has an, uh, uh, galaxy S S eight, I believe or an S7 or something like that, okay? And we encourage people to take photos because you never know what you're going to get. Guess what's on the cover of the local newspaper this week? It's that photo. Whatever, whatever mm-hmm. photos. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, and... And the, and the whole point is, sorry, Keith, the whole point that I'm trying to get at is, when is enough enough? This photograph... Between my, my credibility, and I, I'll put my credibility on the line, because I said to this person, well, I personally am putting my reputation on the line with this, and I am 100% authenticating this photo. And he goes, what gives you the right to do that? <laughs> because you were there. And that's what I said. I said, yeah. because I was there, I know the scenario, I know there was nobody on that staircase. I saw the picture 15 minutes beforehand. My one tour guide, Corey, who you guys will meet down at Paracon, okay, she verified it for me. 
That's what I need. I'm putting my credibility on the line. So I can obviously tell whoever criticized that photo has never listened to the show, to Spaced Out Radio, doesn't know who the hell I am. Frankly, I don't even know why they're Facebook friends with me if you don't know what I do. Right? Because Mm -hmm. if I'm, if me or anybody is going to put their credibility on the line to say this is 100% real, and let's say they have Spaced Out Radio or Midnight in the Desert or Coast to Coast or whatever it is, anything big in the paranormal field, we have to believe that. Okay? We have to. Now, television gets a pass because, let's face it, a lot of what we see on television is faked, and it's admitted to. Okay? But if someone out there, whether it's a reporter, a journalist, a tour guide, says, this is what we caught, this is the scenario, we have to take people at their word. You know what I'm saying? And in this Mm -hmm. field, credibility should mean something. And it It doesn't. And it doesn't. Uh, uh, The way I see it, too, I mean, if it's blatant Photoshop, if it's blatant BS, there probably is, uh, but you also have to look at the the aspect of, and, and you cut you, you kind of pointed at it. You don't know what the background of that photo was. You weren't there, uh, and, and you know that's the picture. Or that's the question I see all the time: is, well, why did you take that picture at that particular point in time? You, you see that all the time. That's it, it's like well, because, and, and they don't like hearing the answer of. Because something told me to, or I had the feeling of taking that picture. Cooper, let me ask you this. You saw the photo. You've been doing this for 20 plus years. In my Mm -hmm. opinion, I think you have the best paranormal team on the planet going right now. Okay. Tell me if you think that that photo is real or not after hearing the story. I say it's real. Uh, Was it an owl? No, it looked nothing like an owl. <laughs> Somebody didn't see, has never seen an owl before in person to think that was an owl. Um, but yeah, I, I say it's a valid picture. What okay. is it? But, I but what, tell what, you. Le- what leads you? <laughs> what leads you as an investigator of the paranormal to believe that photo is real? Because I don't see you BSing a photo, and there's obviously a a, a figure up in the in the loft or in the rafters of that picture. That's what, that's where my eyes led me was right there. Not to mention yeah, that there was plenty of backup on that. Something that brought me up on it was when I saw nobody had to explain where's the ghost. You know, no. it, and was, that's, that's what, it was an that, obvious picture. <laughs> that's what gets me is, you know, you see a lot of pictures and you're going, what am I looking at? Where, where, okay, where, where is it? You, you took this picture, you're showing it to everybody for a reason, but I'm not catching what I'm supposed to see. And if I have to see, look at a picture and you have to circle what I'm supposed to be looking at, then it becomes psychosomatic. I even had a couple people say that is 100% pareidolia. There you yeah, go. no. That's what I was looking for. Um, it was but definitely no, there not. Was obviously a figure there. And it was all, you know, that, that wasn't one of those. No, I knew exactly what you were showing by looking at the picture. I'm just trying to, I know we're running out of time here and you guys are going to want to change topics. I want to read some of the comments. If I can mm-hmm. quickly scroll down on my Facebook far enough to, to find it here. Oh, I'm still well, a couple of days behind. But. While you're looking there. Just you know, just so you know, it's usually the people who think it's real that are probably the ones that aren't commenting, because I showed that picture to my wife, and she goes, "Wow, that's cool." Nothing else oh, it wasn't oh, fake, oh, but it was a cool. Lot, a lot more positive than negative. Don't get me wrong; we had a lot more positive than negative in regards to that. Um, my issue with it is, you know, at what point. Excuse me. Do you say, you know, or do you fall for the tricks that people try to tell you? Well, I need this, I need that in order to prove it. You know what I'm saying? You know what they. 
the whole thing there as far as individuals, especially when you look at the majority of people or the greater majority of people going, that's a really intriguing picture. The ones that are saying, I need this proof, I need that proof, quite frankly, most of them will not look it, will not recognize it, even if it were right in front of them. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, no, yeah, the doubters correct. are going to doubt it, whether they're getting, you know, they would say ET doesn't exist if they were getting a digital rectal exam by a gray <laughs> in a tuxedo. I mean, it, there's people that are not going to believe anything, no matter what. They don't want to. And for those and, people, and the, you know, I mean, there's no arguing with them. No. Those are the haters, and they're going to hate. They didn't get the picture, and uh, they're the ones that are probably faking evidence. Um, I saw it put one one day, you know, it's hard to argue with somebody using, it's hard to argue using logic when the other person that is arguing against you hasn't got a clue what logic is. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, like playing chess with a pigeon, you know, pigeon's going to think it went one no matter what anyway. I've, you know, the, as far as researching the picture, and I'm not saying I doubt the picture. I just think it to shut the naysayers up. Go to that exact area, the exact time, sex conditions. Shoot the picture again. Mm-hmm. You do realize that's impossible. You know, well, you can come real damn close. I mean, well, here, here's the thing: you shoot the picture uh, again. Reason, I, here, here's the thing: you shoot the picture again, and there is not an object up there. Then the, right. you know the the entity is gone, or the owl flew away. I don't see it being an owl, but yeah. either way, well, you, know, you can you can get yeah. you can get in close to the exact same spot and take that picture again and compare the two. And there's probably not going to be anything there. Right, it'd be a negative control, but you know we wouldn't have a positive control, but we at least have you know proof of absence. Let's you see, know, I, we. I got I got Halloween prop. You can see the mask. Uh, For real? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You went yeah. you went all the way up in the rafters and put a, a, a Jason uh, figurine up there with a the mask. Yeah. There we uh, go. Absolutely. <laughs> you know the the funny part about it is the one person who is criticizing the most on the photo, his comments are gone. He erased all his comments. Uh-huh. Hmm. And, and tri- Trippin brings brings up the point that, you know, owls don't have arms. At least not that I've, I've seen. I mean, unless they, no, you know, prop Owl man. Human. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a new cryptid. We can talk about owl, owl humans um, on the next show. Yeah, there we go. Um, I, I'm, yeah. just gonna, and, I, I'm just got a really bizarre <laughs> question for you regarding that, just because of personal fear <laughs> of me. The these um, these owl these humanoid owls that you're talking about that are just recently um, being listed as cryptids. How tall are they? I uh, never heard of one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we were ma- we were making a joke, Keith. <laughs> I well, know. there are traditions. <laughs> there are in Europe. Uh, there are owl man traditions. I mean, it's huh. not, you know, but it's it's a mystical. It's it's not like there's a buttload of them. It's usually a single individual. It's it's more of a Celtic, uh, European thing. But they're really, they, you know, there is a tradition out there of uh, entity known as Owl Man and variations thereof. So okay. it's not recent. You know, it's not a recently invented thing but i think it's a recently exploited thing all right well, guys what, what have you what, i gotta what take you, a break what have you heard about it keith well because there's a race called Uka, which out. are in are literally they look like owls with arms they're a bipedal okay. owl about four feet tall huh. okay this is why i was asking you because i thought when you <laughs> mentioned that i thought you were actually that you would stumble across one. No, no, I've never heard of one. I was, I was making a joke because, uh, yeah, yeah, because the, the image in the picture's got an arm and somebody else commented that it looked like an owl. 
Um, but, but no, I've never heard of that that one. Okay, guys, we got we got to take a break. I hate to interrupt, but uh, we got to take a break here. So hold on just a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we uh, will continue our discussion about the upcoming Forest Moon Paranormal Paracon, September 23rd in Concrete, Washington. Uh, next week, we'll be taking a break on S4 due to the Paracon. Uh, however, normally you can join us every Saturday night at midnight right after Spaced Out Saturday on Spaced Out Radio. Uh, Spaced Out Radio is seven days a week, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at www.spacedoutradio.com. We will be right back. Hi there, this is Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and I want you to come on a nightly journey. Starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, every Monday through Friday, you can come hang out with me and the other space travelers. We have it all from Carl the Alien bouncing on by to those misfit gnomes causing havoc. It's three hours of fun and entertainment on those topics the mainstream really doesn't want to touch. Come get all paranormal with us at spacedoutradio.com. And together, my friends, along with our resident guitar god, Bumblefoot, we own the night. Become more intimate and interactive with Spaced Out Radio. Join our Space Travelers Club with your new membership. For $5 a month, we'll provide you with special access to the website, monthly prize draws from books to psychic readings, along with monthly newsletter, private interviews, and more. Sign up today to be part of Spaced Out Radio's experience. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio, or our website including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. This is Eric Markham, news editor for the Spaced Out Radio's The Encounter Online. We have put together a great team of writers and journalists from all over the world to bring you top quality paranormal stories from alien encounters to the latest conspiracies. You won't find any of that fake news here. True stories and top notch reporting as we look to bring these experiences to the mainstream. The Encounter online only at spacedoutradio.com. Do you want to know the truth? Do UFOs exist? Are aliens real? Are the governments hiding the biggest secret in history? We're UFO seekers, and we're on a hunt for the truth. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow along with us as we journey across the United States, visiting UFO hotspots and alien hotspots, trying to document the UFO phenomenon. Catch us on Spaced Out Radio every third Monday of the month as we discuss Area 51, UFOs, and more. And also, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Have you had an experience you can't explain? Would you like someone you can trust to look into it? We have just the place. The SOR Sightlines Report is the place for you to find answers. Whether it's Bigfoot, UFOs, Dogman, Ghosts, Aliens, or anything strange, the Sightlines Report will get you connected with one of our expert researchers to find out what's going on. All of your personal information is kept 100% confidential. The SOR Sightlines Report, a place for you to find the answers you need. Only at SpacedOutRadio.com. Welcome to Spaced Out Saturdays with me, Dave Cruz from Beyond the Strange. Our weekly feature on SpacedOutRadio.com will take you around the world discussing everything from the paranormal to the latest conspiracies from the top guests in their fields. We won't leave any story uncovered. Spaced Out Saturdays at SpacedOutRadio.com starting 9 p.m. Pacific. Midnight Eastern. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? It's Cosmic Sundays with me, Elizabeth Anglin, in Cosmic Passport. Let me take you down a three-hour spiritual journey where we will get into everything from ET contact to Psychic Sundays. It's a journey of listening and learning together with some of the best professionals in their fields. You can tune in to Cosmic Passport 
at spacedoutradio.com every Sunday, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. The views and opinions expressed on tonight's show by tonight's hosts and guests are not necessarily those of Spaced Out Radio, Spaced Out Saturdays, Spaced Out Sundays, or SpacedOutRadio.com. Listener discretion is advised. And now back for hour number two, we have Corey Ruiz, Eric Cooper from Forest Moon Paranormal, and S4. You can find Forest Moon Paranormal on Facebook. And for more information on S4, visit spacedoutradio.com. And now, here's Eric Cooper and Corey Ruiz. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight, we, for those of you who are just uh, joining us, we are discussing uh, the upcoming Forest Moon uh, Paracon here in uh, Concrete, Washington. And before I go any further, I would like to give a big shout out to Trip and Fool in the chat room, who is always constantly putting up uh, copy and paste of all of the things that we're doing, including the Paracon and you know, links to the t-shirt fundraisers and stuff stripping. We thank you so much. That is very, very, very awesome of you. Appreciate it very much, dude. Uh, tonight, our speakers on our panel are Eric Markham, Dave Scott, our, and our Keith Andrews. Gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Oh, yeah. So, so, Keith, what do you expect for Paracon? Do you expect visitors? Do you, do you suspect uh, we'll have uh, any kind of UFO activity going over? Well, uh, during during Paracon, I, I certainly, I certainly am, if you will, expecting the the flybys, if you will. Um, I would love to see one of them drop in. You know, not whether they come in with a with a ship or whether they just simply materialize. I'm game either way. Um, but I am expecting an awful lot of excitement, a lot of interaction, and there's going to be conversations that are that are taking place, and things that people are going to see that nobody's going to be expecting. the The best part is with the high, with the energy that's coming in on this one. I fully expect the the city itself, you know, the city of concrete itself for a lot of the people that are just kind of sitting by waiting to see what happens with this coming out to get a little better idea of it. And, and that's what we're hoping for. We're, we're actually hoping to have more community interaction. I mean, uh, I, and I think I brought it up last night briefly on spaced out radio when we were talking about it is that, you know, I've got about a hundred enforcement paranormal that are local. But you don't see a lot of interaction. You, you, they're quiet. They're lurkers. And, you know, we've had the Facebook group up for about six years. Whenever Facebook first came around, we set up the group. The group Because before, <laughs> before Facebook was around, we had a, a Yahoo group. That was the new thing. And, you, you know, and over the years, I've had a lot of lurkers. And all of a sudden, you know, you'll have a random post. Yeah, I've been in the group for about five years now, and uh, I've got a, I've got a post now. And so uh, that's what I'm hoping is uh, out of all the lurkers that are, you know, local that are watching what we do, seeing how valid we are, because I, I think that's what some of it is. And again, like I said last night, last year for the first annual, we had 70 to 100 people, roughly. And in some of those cases, it might be a matter of um, they're seeing if we keep on going. And when they see that we we aren't going anywhere and that we are going to keep on going, they might start showing up. So what, what do you think, Corey? What do we need to do to vamp this up? Um, 
You know, I think that, you know, we need to just show everyone this year that it's, a, you know, another successful Paracon. Um, you know, and I think if we can get a little bit more uh, funding coming in, which I think will happen when people see that we're not going away, you know, this is going to continue, uh, then we can actually get maybe a little bit better advertising, you know, just, just some other stuff going on. We'll get more word of mouth throughout the communities, you know, that this happens every year so about the same time, you know, and I think just that is going to be what it'll take to just continue to make this thing grow. You know, and a big part of that uh, is, one, the fact that we have a free Paracon, you know, where lots, so many others charge you, you know, $100, $200 to get in. Um, you know, and ours is free. The only thing we charge for is obviously for the VIP tickets, you know, because that's that's a real up-close and special personal type of interaction there. Uh, the other thing is, is that the way we do our Paracon, you know, where we are interactive with our audience, you know, uh, we were last year and it's going to be again this year. And then thirdly, you know, the caliber of speakers we have at our Paracon, you know, you go to these Paracons and you know, other Paracons and I've heard uh, Dave and, and Mark and talk about how, you know, you get the these uh, fake thug gangsta you know, person who was completely normal the day before, uh, but now is some hip hop ghost thug. Really? Um, okay. Uh, you know, standing up there making things look like um, a crack show. Uh, but we don't have that. We have a high caliber of speakers that are at our Paracon that are all. Uh, as I would say, professional in this industry as to what we do. We take it seriously. You know, we don't look at people's uh, suffering, as as you might put it, uh, you know, with the paranormal for what we take care of as entertainment. We don't find it entertaining at all. We find it serious and we, something that we go take care of. And every one of our speakers are of that frame of mind, and they all come out here with the mindset of being able to share their knowledge and educate other people with it and interact with them at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I got to bring something up, Dave, you're, you're, you're wanting to talk about dream Wars. Yeah. Well, and let, and let's preface this because before the show started, you brought up the fact of a Nightmare on Elm Street Dawkins song, Dream Warrior. You know, I can honestly say I, I was a huge Nightmare on Elm Street fan in my teenage years. It got to the point after the first couple that I, I, I was actually cheering on Freddy rather than anybody else. But after part three, between 1 and 3 a.m., I used to sleep with... I used to go to bed probably around 10 o'clock at night because it was a school night and everything like that. And I would wake up between 1 and 3 a.m. for about two months straight every night or almost every night to Dream Warriors playing on my radio. And between that one and remember Will Smith's for, or the French Prince of, Be Prince of Bel Air's version of Not a Nightmare on My Street? Remember that one too. <laughs> both right. of the both of those songs literally haunted the living hell out of me as a teenager for two three months straight, where I literally could not. Oh, by the way, Markham, I did eat poutine for dinner tonight. Just so you know, mm -hmm. but but I honestly was haunted by that song almost every night to the point where I had to turn my radio off at night. You know, just so I could, didn't have to listen to it. It was ridiculous. It scared the living daylights out of me so, so much. So that song freaks me out. And, and you know, it's just, it, and I know it's off topic, but uh, I, I got to say, though, the, the first one was creepy. I was a kid yes. back then. Yeah. And I got to say, the first one, the, the, I, and I, I still have the image when old girl is being spun around on the ceiling, that I think is the worst image of God of that movie. Mm -hmm. But after that, it was more of a comedy. It really was. 
and, and I, I creep my mate out when I sing the, uh, you know, one, two, Freddy's coming. Like, yes, you know, and, yes. And, and, and just hearing kids sing that song makes it all the worst. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, hands down, you know, and, and Dawkins' Dream Warrior, that was just, that was superb. Okay, I have to tell this story just because I'm a kind of a jerk, and it was really, really funny. So, <clears throat> uh, uh, me and, and uh, one of my younger brothers in our teens, um, and we're sitting in the dark area watching one of the Nightmare on Elm Street uh, movies, and me being the practical joker that I am, decided that I was going to tape pins to my fingers. And just about as it got to one of the real intense spots, I reached up and took those pins and just kind of scraped them down his back a little bit on my four fingers. Oh, my goodness. He about crapped a brick. And I know I'm a jerk, but, God, it was funny. No, I, and my I got to say, you know what? How many clowns are we going to see for Halloween? Because it came uh-huh. out. Yep. Yeah, here we go again with these damn clowns. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think one of the coolest movie moments I ever heard of, and, and I have to admit I'm a little biased, was my dad. The original thing. He didn't get to see all of it because he went with a friend who had already seen it. And at the moment where they think this thing has got, you know, they've got it cornered in this box, and they pull the lid open and this dead dog rolls out. Well, his friend reached out and grabbed the girl sitting in front of them. Popcorn <laughs> and drink went flying. She started uh-huh. screaming hysterically. Dad and friend bailed out the exit door, and he never did get to see the end of it. <laughs> yeah. And, well, that's and where I get it. <laughs> so, 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 folks, and, and, and now we're approaching the Halloween season. I, I backed off Paracon to September 23rd. Basically, so it doesn't infringe on Halloween for this community because of the fact that our issue last year was the town has a ghost walk. And so we, you know, just to stop the conflict, which they saw it as conflict. I'm not going to get into that, but they saw it as conflict. So we backed off Paracon, one, because the weather is a little bit nicer in September. Not that much better, but it, it is a little bit nicer for Paracon season. And the other, you know, again, so it doesn't infl- it conflict with Halloween in the community. And and that brings up a pet peeve, and I'm hoping you're going to hit this, Dave, uh, with, you know, Pericon, per- per- yeah, Halloween seems to bring out the entertainment of what we do. And there's a time and a place for that, but... This isn't entertaining to us. So are you going to hit that when you do your lecture? I hadn't planned on it, you know, I mean, but I mean, I could always throw it in for you. Why do I got to be the bad guy with everything? That's what I want to know. You're, 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 you're not the bad guy, but you're no, the one that's I'm bringing up. <laughs> Yeah, okay, and folks, we now have Christina George uh, on the show with us tonight, and uh, I'd like Christina to go into a little bit about what she's talking about. Christina doesn't know what the hell she's talking about right now, so what, do you, what am I talking about? <laughs> well, at least she's honest about it then. <laughs> Christina's been, Christina just got back from a bachelorette party and drinking tequila, so, you, uh, so Dave, you know how that week. goes. There warm you go. Up, warm up, ready for them realize. $3 shots. You realize that exactly seven days from now, you and I will be shooting tequila at this moment. Doing a live no, stream. In, actually, in six days. Six days, that's right. Six days, yes, six days. Because at this time next week, everything is going to be over, and it's going to be, oh, my God, Paranormal, Paracon is done. Time to start and, planning for next year's. <laughs> oh, well, oh, no, no I'm thinking. Uh, no, I, I a take a break. It'll be a week. I, I, I take I, I, t- I take a break. Uh, I give myself about a two month, and then I start playing the next year. Because, uh, like, like we're going to talk here a little bit later in the show, is, is that yeah, it, it takes a lot, and it takes a year to plan a good event. 
And that's any event. It, it, a paracon is not something you just slap together and say, we're going to have a lot of people here. We're going to have a great event. And no, it doesn't happen that way. It takes a year to get everything just right. And you're still going to have hiccups right up to the last day. You will still have hiccups. Um, and, and I mean, Dave, you, <laughs> you had a big hiccup. Yeah, we were planning, uh, the original plan was earlier this year that we were going to piggyback off of the Forest Moon Paracon and and bring a Paracon to the 108 Mile Ranch area here. So that way we had the ability to go back to back with guests and with, I hope I'm not fading. Am I still fading, Eric? Nope. You're a little bit, you're, you're a little bit low. Oh, okay. I, I do apologize. I am on my cell phone tonight, so I do apologize. But our whole goal was to piggyback off the Forest Moon Paracon and, you know, really concentrate on on doing almost like a double event because, I mean, Coop, you, your team and us are so close and so tied together that it, it just makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It just makes yeah, sense. We, like we there's, were, we, there's no point in me doing a Paracon a month later when I could do it the week after yours, so that way people could book a full week off of holidays and do both events. It just made logical sense. And exactly. we, we had our team planning it. Everything was going swimmingly. We were starting to – we had the – the this uh, great hotel called the Spruce Hill Spa and Resort where we were going to hold the event and we were actually I mean we had everything planned from UFO walks to to ghost tours uh, we were going to investigate an area of the original Gold Rush Trail that has never been investigated before I mean we had a lot of things planned in the evening live spaced out radio shows from the event. <laughs> in our own spaced out radio bar that they were setting up for us, you know, like it was going to be great. And then the forest fires happened. Right. And, you know, 15 days doesn't seem like a lot guys, but in a community of this size, it's a lot. And exactly. exactly. And, you know, the last of the people who were evacuated just got to go home a few days ago, right? This has been going on for, for, yeah, it's been going on for two and a half months, three months here. And, Mm -hmm. you know, businesses lost money. You know, I mean, our town is much like your town, Coop, where every year there's a plethora of businesses, (laughs) new businesses that open, and, you know, they try and make it. And every year, there's businesses that close because they just can't make it through the winter. No. <clears throat> and that's what's going to happen here. Businesses and, t- and, took a huge hit. And, and right. And when you rely on sponsorship, like if I had a hundred grand in the bank, I would have no problem doing this Paracon. I would just say, screw it, let's do it for the community. But when you have to rely on community money for sponsorship for hotels for everything that you need you know pub, the public buying tickets people right now up here are hoarding their money because they took such a loss during the forest fires you know what i'm saying people were out exactly. of work i mean people lost a paycheck to two paychecks that's a lot of money for some people. They don't have that extra twenty, fifty, eighty, or a hundred dollars to be spending frivolously right now. And, no. and so we really had to make a tough decision with our organizing committee to not do the event. It was a very tough decision. It was a decision we did not want to make, but in the end we really had no choice. Right. It, it, it takes a lot. It, 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 it takes, I mean, and, and it's not cheap. A venue, first of all, you have to plan your venue. And that's a location for those that are, don't understand terms. Some don't. Mm-hmm. The venue is your location for where you're going to hold the Paracon. And it's got to be just right. You have to look at, you know, platform, sound system. Uh, and Absolutely. we learned that last 
Uh, and then you have to look at lodging because not all Paracons uh, actually support their speakers. I mean, uh, and Keith, Keith can attest to that. I uh, can attest Paracons, to that. Okay, I okay. I, I, we're going to. Uh, yeah, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't sure if they put you up or not. But, you know, if you got put, speakers, a, a lot of the expensive Paracons, where they're charging three to 500 bucks a ticket, they've got the money because they're charging enormous amounts of money. And that I, I can understand that goes towards flying in speakers and they pay stipends and they pay, you know, because I've tried to do events before. But Not a lot of them but, don't though, Eric, that's the thing. A lot of them want you to volunteer your time, right. your flight, you know, then, it all to be on you. And I'm sorry, but most speakers, uh, you guys included, don't have time to get, you know, to pay for everything. And that's why we we can at least put up lodging, because you guys get yourselves here. You know what? And if, well, I had the, if, I had, if I had the funding, I would pay you gas or whatever, but we don't have that kind of funding. We're a nonprofit group. Well, I can <laughs> I can tell you this. The biggest insult to me, and this is, this is the first time I'm going to say this, and probably the only time I'm going to say this. So those who are listening who are also spaced out radio listeners, they'll learn something. The Paracon I went to in Provincetown to speak, I'll tell you, we were the first, and, and Preacher can, was there. He can attest that this is God's honest truth. We were the mm-hmm. fir- one of the first ones to arrive Preacher actually volunteered to help set up the booth that morning, or the entire the entire uh, uh, office that, or pardon me, uh, what, what's a the, the entire room where all the tables were set up for people. Okay, mm-hmm. he volunteered to do that, and because the organizers volunteers were not didn't even show up. Okay. So the day before, the organizer says, hey, did you read our great article in the paper? Or, pardon me, in the, in the town magazine? No, no, right. no. So Preacher and I go out for pizza at about 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Time. And we, I find the article in the local paper. And it's about who's coming to the event and who's speaking at the event. And he's got all his TV people on there. And then he says, and we have some people coming from Canada. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's a slap in the face. Okay. So that I mean, if you was, look at our, if I, hold on, if I'm, you not, look at our website, I'm not done yet. I'm not done, okay. I'm not done oh, yet. Oh, it gets better. Yeah, it I'm gets better. Done. I'm not done yet. So th- then I find out at the end of the event, and I'm going to skip to the end for a second, that my hotel, even though he knew I was traveling 3,500 miles to attend this event, he only covered half of my hotel for two nights. Hmm? I had to pay for the other two. On top of that, after the event, it's about 545, and, and two lovely people who are spaced out radio listeners, Dave and Maggie, drove down from... Or, or drove from New Jersey. Uh, is that down or up? I apologize. I think it's up. Is it up I think or it was down? Up. Okay. Drove from New Jersey. Over and up. Okay. To come to the event. They wanted to hear me speak. There was mm-hmm. there was no advertisement anywhere for any or for me speaking. I was the we were the only group who he did not go through the event because where we were speaking in the hotel was different than, than where uh, the, the room was with all the tables. I was the only speaker that he did not go around the room and say, okay, Dave Scott is speaking now. We would love for everybody to head on in. Everybody else he did that for. Not only that... So Dave and Maggie, I meet up with them after the Paracon. It's about 5.45. There's a bar inside the hotel. And by the way, before 5 o'clock, there is nowhere to buy a drink in that entire hotel, even if you wanted a bottle of water or grab some food. And so we end up sitting at the bar, and Dave and Maggie are like, let us buy you a drink. And I gave them a poster, and I signed it, and they were so happy. And they said, are you going to the VIP dinner tonight? (laughs) <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I said what VIP dinner well 
Well, part of the package was the VIP. Uh, we, you buy the VIP ticket, and you get to sit with all the speakers and talk with all the speakers and have a get-together, and then you take part in a ghost hunt with them after. Except the speakers didn't know about it. <laughs> oh, no. Every speaker. Oh, no. Team, they knew. Every speaker we team knew, know. Knew, knew about it, except we weren't told. Wow. Then he uh-huh. wanted to. Then he wanted after Eric had had helped him set up, and Everett helped set up and, and do his thing. He wanted my members of my team who traveled with me to this event to help spread the love of Space Out Radio. He wanted to charge them ticket costs to get in. Oh, wow. Okay, and I and I kiboshed that. You know, I threw him a T-shirt and everything like that, and. And then on top of that, so after the event, we run into the organizer in the downtown area afterwards. And I said, so what time are we meeting up tomorrow? Uh, I guess there's another paranormal investigation or something that we're do- that, that's going on. He goes, oh, no, you guys can just play tourists and um, we, we don't need you here. Oh, hell no. I would no. never be back. Yeah. No. Yeah, definitely no. not. I mean, I would. I will tell you, you know, Eric, I mean, obviously, I have been speaking at conferences for many, many years, and I've been covering them for my show as well. And I've been to a lot of really good, you know, uh, events, and I've been to a lot of really bad ones. And I had to say, for the very first one that you did, I was very impressed. I mean, everything was, you know, great. We had a great time. Uh we might have had too much fun, but we had a, we had a great we had a great time there, and it really as soon as you invited us back, I mean everybody that was there, we were absolutely down and couldn't wait to all get back together, you know, this year. So, mm-hmm. and, and, and that led to my next question because I, I, I want to bring you in, Christina, because you you missed the first hour, and uh, so yeah, why this Paracon, and what is the big what is your big draw to come all the way to Washington State for the Forest Moon Paracon? Well, you know, I talked about this last year as well, but I have been, want, you know, I've been really pushing, because I'm in the paranormal field, I also investigate the ufology and cryptozoology, and my show is Paranormal Connections, trying to show the connections between all of the fields. I was definitely looking for a conference that was covering all the different aspects. And you just don't find that very often. You find somebody no, who has don't. a paranormal conference or a UFO conference or a Bigfoot conference, but you don't find them all combined together because you just, for a lot of people, they're just, it's too much for them. They're like, no, I can handle one, but not the other. And with all of our topics, with all of our speakers, with all of the different experience in all the different fields, it was so educational, and to me, especially with the background of your group, and it's so very close to mine, it, it was just a perfect fit. And, you know, mm-hmm. as you know, I drew a 15 hours from California to go and be part of that on my own dime. You know, I mean, and yes, you took care of, you know, us as far as, you know, our, our hotel and everything. We had a great time. But, you know, again, it, it was something that it was – it was, you definitely have the right idea. And again, it was very successful last year. And I mean, I was honored to be asked back. So I, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Excellent. I love hearing that because, yeah, you don't want a speaker to say, no, I'm not interested this year. That's that just, yeah, that don't fly. Oh, I've done <laughs> one that. Of the things you know? I find, one of the things I found kind of amazing, just talking with what, just hearing what uh, she was talking about, what Dave talked about. There is going to be so much, and we haven't colluded. I mean, I've heard a little bit of Dave's speech, and y'all have heard me talk a little bit about mine on the shows, but, I mean, there hasn't been any kind of collusion. Let's talk about, you know, this. There is so much overlap, even though we're both taking, we're all taking different treatments of the same topic. The overlap and the synchronicity is just amazing. This I think this is going to be a great event because it's, we're already showing a unified, you know, view. Right. Why do and you people, think they have y'all as speakers? 
And people were, and people said, oh, last subliminal year, brainwashing, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, a lot of the, a lot of the attendees last year said that they actually really enjoyed it because they actually learned something from all of the speakers, mm-hmm. which was amazing. And our, even our round table was amazing as well. A lot of people had questions for us. And I mean, that's what we're here for. That's the whole point of us coming. And, you know, so to have all that interaction and the interaction between the speakers, I mean, there was, I have been to so many events that there's just so much drama that goes on at these conferences. Nobody can get along. Everybody does. This person doesn't like this person. And so, you know, oh, I don't want to do the event because they're going to be speaking there or they're going to be attending. It's just so crazy. And there was none of that at this place, uh, at this conference. It was, everybody got along. Everybody had a great time. There was a lot of interaction between the guests and the speakers and, and again, this panel of speakers is very open to interacting with the people who attend, which is also awesome because I've also been to so many where you get these, you know, uh, so-called paracelebs and, you know, they want to charge you $20 to even take a picture or talk to them, you know, and it's like they don't want to interact with you. And it's just, it's a whole different experience. And this was just, everybody got along. Everybody had a great time. Everybody was learning from each other. I mean, it, it couldn't have been any better. And a lot of really yeah, it, good friendships were made. And that irritates me. Paracelebs. Uh, I mean, really? You were on Ghost Hunters. Big deal. It's entertainment. It's not reality. Uh, I, I don't recognize any paracelebs, to be honest with you. So you want me to pay you 20 bucks? How about, how about no? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, it, no. Um so uh, tell the listeners a, a little bit about what you're talking about and what, what they can expect. Well, I'm going to be talking to ufology this year uh, and some of the signs of if you might possibly be an abductee. Again, I have a, two divisions, one for the paranormal and the other is for ufology and cryptozoology. And uh, I have interviewed hundreds of of contactees and abductees as well as I'm an abductee myself. So it is going to be a very, very interesting and informative uh, lecture. I think that uh, a lot of people are also going to be uh, surprised at some of the signs that you actually might be an Uh abductee because I never thought I was until a couple years ago when everything changed and I had to do some regression and, it kind of validated everything. So, uh, again, it's it's going to be some some definitely some interesting topics that are going on. It, it, it's definitely going to be eye opening for some because you know we we talked about this last night on, on SOAR. Uh, in, in that, yeah, and, and I hate as as you know as having an emergency response team. I hate being the one that tells a client that. Oh, I don't know how to tell you this, but. My God, you you actually do fit the pattern of an abduction. Mm-hmm. I hate being the one to break that. Um, yeah. It's the worst feeling and the worst thing to have to do to someone. Yeah, it's um, a hard pill to swallow yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and and then you have to try to help them understand it, which is where our Keith Andrews is going to come in because then he's going to, have to be talking about which races fly, which craft. So then we can take the description of the craft. This particular new abductee, uh, is, is seeing and pinpoint which race is abducting them. And then is of course is where our team comes in and stops the abduction. That's new, but the more abductees we find, the more abductees we can actually help. Them. It's the hard part is getting the abductee to come out and talk. Well, yeah, and that's a lot of that is because of the ridicule they they get both from the people close to them and sadly, way too often amongst the so-called investigators. And don't get me wrong with your crew. It's very much a professional setup, but I've run into some people that claim to be in contact or claim to be researching this for you know the past several decades. And they wouldn't know an off-worlder from a from a lump of cheese. Hundred percent. Yeah. No. No. And, and, and you know, and, and Char's asking if you can get some of the signs now. Uh, uh, we don't have a whole lot of time right now. Um, actually, S four, we actually go into a whole section of alien abduction. 
Um, but you know, and that's unfortunate. Uh, it, it, we have a, a team north of us called Bumps, and I was talking to them the other day. That's actually one of the ballot teams that I do uh, recognize. And they actually had an abductee contact them, and they referred him to us. I have yet to hear from this individual because he's terrified of contacting us. Why? Because of another team or another investigator that he's already worked with and has already ruined it for him. Um, and you know, and that's the unfortunate aspect of what we do is so many ass clown crackpot teams and groups out there that say they know what they're doing and ruin it for a client. And, and that's not the first time we've had, we had a case up here that we were getting ready to go into. And then we got told, Oh, never mind. My wife doesn't want the, uh, paranormal people here. And, and that's not uncommon. Right. So. It gets so frustrating. It really does. It does, but we just keep doing what we're doing, and <clears throat> our reputation eventually, you know, um, outrides all that doubt. And so when people are, are looking, and it, I find it very often that people go through sometimes many different groups because they can't really find, you know, everybody feels like they have some kind of expertise, which we all agree is a bunch of crock too, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they go in there and they can't help these clients in the bottom line. And it always shocks me because they'll come in and they'll maybe have three teams that have gone through and none of them could help, you know, the family's about to give up and they, you know, found out if they move, it might not help and all these different things. And we can come in and, and within, you know, one trip there, you know, fix the problem. And, but this is what is happening because people that are new that are coming into this field don't, they get very bored with locations because mm -hmm. they want, they want to have private clients. They want to be able to say, we take on private clients. And there's a lot of teams right now that are charging crazy amounts of money to investigate. I, it just drives me absolutely bonkers when I, when I see some of the stuff that's going on and they don't have a clue of what they're doing. So it, it's, it's no. frustrating, but you know, what we do is we just have to keep being there. And so, you know, to, to clean up everybody else's messes when need be, and it's what we do. And, and, and that's an issue here locally is, is again, paranormal entertainment. Um, and, you know, I, I get that some teams are after the entertainment aspect. But if you're going to be after the entertainment aspect, then you need to have a backup plan to help the client. Uh, whether it's to call in an emergency team, whether it's to, you know, or not even, there's an idea, not even do the paranormal entertainment aspect. Because the paranormal, we all know, is not entertainment. It's not, and we said this, hell, we said that earlier on the show. It's not entertaining for someone to get a scratch from a ghost. It's not entertaining to be abducted. That is not entertainment. That is reality. And we base this on reality, not entertainment. And that's kind of Dave's realm <laughs> when, he, when, he, when, he, when he talks to the Paracon. Um, so are you in on the investigation Friday night if we do an investigation at the hook? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. Like I said, I mean, I have to leave on uh -huh. Sunday, so I couldn't do it on Sunday. But, I mean, I, I was down last time, so we're, we're completely, I'm completely down. Exactly, exactly. And our Keith Andrews. So yep. there's, a, there's conversation in the chat room about the cheese morphers. Is there an alien race that morphs into cheese? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> I was going to say, that, that's a new one. <laughs> It is. It is. It's a. It's a new race, and they and they, they fly around a baby bell shaped craft. There we go. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> With yeah, a red a... laughing cow on the side of their car. <laughs> no, but I would. You know, he's talking about these uh, full shape shifters, and that must be what a wonderful experience that must be to not be locked in a in just one form. Well. It does create some interesting side effects. One of the obvious is there's not a prayer that a human is ever going to be able to run one of their ships. Is that the happy cow race? <laughs> <Huh>. Not. <laughs> not. Now, yeah, because what they have to shape pseudopodia to fit the... I mean, that's just got to be... Exactly. 
Wow. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's it's phenomenal to watch it, but they they are an intriguing race. But I'll tell you, they're the only reason they can speak is because they can form the vocal cords they need to. Oh, right. Wow. So, I mean, technically, could they shapeshift into a block of cheese? The answer is yes. <laughs> Roughly 160 <laughs> pounds of cheese. But why? <laughs> right, that's the question. Why? why <laughs> As an amoeboid race, are all they... you could morph into, why would it be a block of cheese? Just to see what more, could be one more, impor- t- <laughs> more importantly, what kind of cheese are we talking about here? Oh. <laughs> Well, they could go so actually. With the are they? Do they have like a central nervous system, or is the entire organism brain? Like, if you take a piece of one of these amoeboids, does it have the full consciousness and experience of the other amoeboid? Like, by like, if an organism by uh, reproduces through binary fission. Um. Number one, they they are essentially um, essentially they they've got a decentralized nervous system. Okay, but no, when like when they when they reproduce, the new one does not get all of their memories. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, it's it's not a question of complete replication. They get enough to function, but that's it. Okay, it's not a, like a, a parthenogenesis where you get two identical beings. It's more like no, coral than no, bud. No. Okay. Hmm. No, okay, they, so they, we're, we're, we're coming close to the end of the show. That was a quick two hours. Uh, but I would, like to ask, I, I would like to ask uh, Keith one more question. Uh, so you, you don't anticipate but possibly anticipate off worlder visitation. What do you think about government? Oh, the government is definitely going to be there. They're just not going to tell you. Or at least they're not likely to tell you. Right. Right. You see them as a problem. Or at least you'll see what we know. In in all fairness, I see the government as just another bunch of humans that are looking for an explanation for something that is beyond their ken. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, Corey, are you excited about Paracon? Well, duh. (laughs) 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 Yeah, I I mean, this is going to be great. So what do you expect out of Paracon? Uh, He's just just uh, glad he doesn't have to run the board that weekend. (laughs) Yeah. um, I mean, what do I expect at a Paracon period or expect at our Paracon? Our Paracon. Um. I expect that we're going to have more people there than we had last year. Uh, I expect that we're going to have some of the best group of speakers that probably any Paracon has ever had. Uh, I feel that way because I feel every one of them, as I've said before, are pros uh, in this uh, genre. And, uh, oh, something's done. I heard a ding. Uh, um you know, I, I this is just. I think it's going to be a fantastic time. You know, the other the other great part about um, our Paracon is that we have the VIP roundtable afterwards. You know, we have that opportunity to let up to I think what is it twenty five people I think. Um, you know, have the up close and personal chance uh, to talk to not just the speakers, uh, but other solid professionals. Uh, in in uh, in in our industry, uh, and ask questions and get some you know real time feedback and on on some of the things that they've seen or had go on or just have pure curiosities about. Um, I'm honored this year that I actually get to be part of the VIP roundtable. I think it's pretty sweet. And what do you expect on the VIP roundtable? Um, well, you know, basically just a lot of what I was saying, you know, I expect there's going to be, you know, a room full of people that are uh, at least somewhat like-minded that are going to, you know, take some time to ask some questions, uh, along with, uh, I think you have a list of questions that you're going to feed to the panel as well. I mean, we're all just going to get an opportunity, 
to put our experiences out there uh, and show mm -hmm. you know what we know. Yes, it will be the classified list, top secret eyes only. Right. And it's only filler questions, folks. It, it, it's a, and I actually do, or I will, I haven't even made the list yet. <laughs> We've been busy. Um, and I, oh, hell, I only I have less than a week now. Anyway, but it will be in a sealed envelope. And it is only filler questions because I, I suspect our VIP guests will have plenty of questions for the panel. So my questions go second to what our VIP roundtable people, you folks, have. And that's why we do it. It's the after after Pericon party. Well, and that's my hope. And, and um, you know, I think that's one of the things that um, as we start the day and we end the day at Paracon, that we just need to make sure that we take that moment to remind everybody, because I think most everybody that's going to be at the VIP table is probably going to be at the actual Paracon as well. You know, just remind everybody, hey, if you've got some questions or haven't maybe come up with something, think about it. You know, have some questions for us. You know, we're, we're ready to answer the, the hard questions. Well, yeah, and, and you can and even come up and talk to us without having to. It won't cost you twenty dollars to get a picture with us, or or come talk to us and have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're charging five. Oh, you're only and, charging and, five. We'll come to my booth because I'm doing it for free. Are negotiable. <laughs> <laughs> unless no, you mark I think that's one of the draws. <laughs> unless you mark one of the draws to ours. <laughs> Mark Markham <laughs> has to pay them for an autograph. I was going to say, yeah, I probably have true. to pay. Please, please. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll pay you for my own. <laughs> say, uh, hell yeah. We had so much fun last year, not only with the speakers ourselves who, who hung out the whole weekend before and after, because uh, we were all at the same hotel, so we all ate together and hung out together and everything, but uh, also along with the guests, like even the um, Ghost Walk tour was a lot of fun. Like we, we, I have to say, we had a lot of fun that weekend. It was a blast. It was a blast. Is there any you know, to confirm the price of Patron tequila before we get down there? Because I hope they don't jack it up for this weekend. It's now it was three dollars uh, no. last you, time. Yes, uh, I will. I will check. Uh, at the actually, as at much the as much advertising as they're getting from us, they ought to, it ought to be two dollars. No kidding. For exactly. Paracon people, yeah. <laughs> but hey, I will say worry, that we're definitely not going to drink any so-called Patron, a.k.a. Uh, Costco tequila? Costco te yeah. Kirkland. Tequila. It's Kirkland, Kirkland brand. This, that's what it was. Where we, I felt like I was going to be a fire breather. Like, that's how bad it was. Like, if I was next to a close foot, there was it no was way a, that was It wasn't was nice. It, was, yeah, it was wasn't perfect. nice. Well, the, you just remember... This year, it's not up in the mountains. This year, it's actually in the town of Concrete by the airport. Nice. So, <laughs> last year, I know Dave, Dave got lost. Dave was there a little bit late. I because, got lost. Well, <laughs> and this year, there's not a gate you have to go through. Uh, it, it's actually on one of the main streets in Concrete. And oh, it'd be easy to get through. I can't and, be the gate patrol this year? No, there's no gate patrol. There's no <laughs> gate. Uh, and that's one you know reason. That was one positive that we didn't get tight. Um, and we're in town and uh, somebody commented earlier, you know, that there is no lunch break. We couldn't do a lunch break this year because we wanted to pack in an information day. So there is no lunch break, but there are, we're in town. Uh, if you want to slip away and grab something to eat, there's a, uh, there's Cascade Burgers right down the street and there's a plethora of restaurants that are within two to three minutes of the Paracon. So, um, you know, and, and if you don't want to get away to eat, bring a bag lunch. You can eat while you're listening, you know, by all means. But because of time constraints, we we learned last year that 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning was too early. Most people aren't even awake by then. So it was kind of a waste of time to start Paracon at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, which is why we moved it to 10. Because Especially everyone's got after time to a night of drinking tequila. That's kind of an early yeah, morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that works out well for me. It means I've got like six hours on the floor before we even actually start. Right, oh. right. 
so we you know we moved the time up this year. That was one of the changes, uh, and of course, obviously, venue, which is a much better venue because it's in town. And uh, again, folks, this is our second year. Every year is only going to get better. And I will tell anybody who has abilities that coming to a Paracon in this town is something you'll never forget. I mean, I drove into this town, and as soon as I hit the area, I was like, oh, my goodness, this is going to be interesting. Because between all the activity in this small town and going through this ghost tour, I mean, obviously I walked around without the anybody giving us a tour in the first place. We were just wandering around town and checking things out because we had nothing else to do. But this town... I mean, you want to talk about activity. Not only was there activity in just about almost every building on the Strip on both sides, but they there was a lady that was coming from the building over into the bar to interact. I mean, it was, it was crazy. So for people who have abilities and you can pick up on energy, like this is a place that you don't want to miss out on coming and hanging out at. Me. Again, not only great subjects, but great place to investigate for sure. Mm-hmm. And that's why we keep it in concrete, because yeah, uh, like I said earlier in the show, it's got a plethora of UFO activity, Bigfoot activity, and hell, you're in the most haunted town in Sketch County. So yeah. it's it just, it, it, it's a perfect, you know, area to have a paracon. I agree. I agree. And uh, don't forget, too, that you can probably buy a bottle of uh, Patron cheaper just buying it by the bottle than buying it by the shot. And uh, that uh, barbecue could be real fun and interesting if you do that. It's not as fun. No, 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 no it was fun. not as fun. You have to be with us and, and just see how it all unfolds shot by shot. It's, it's <laughs> Some of our live streams were very, very interesting. They Again, we had a blast. I, I have to say we had a lot of fun. Well, in other words, words Corey, of a feather gotta, flock together. <laughs> yes. In, in other words, Is Corey, you need you need a hall pass. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going to work on that. I'm going to I'll probably see about tagging along for a good portion of it this time. And just a, <laughs> FYI, I usually uh, live stream everything. So if you, if you don't want to be on camera, make sure you stay behind me throughout oh, the night. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll take the forewarning. Turn the camera around. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> Oh, and just to put this out, so September yeah, September 22nd, 2018 will be the 2018 Paracon. I looked it up. So, I'm uh, yeah, I'm already looking at dates and whatnot. Well, and so much we're for waiting for two months. months. Say again? I said so much for waiting for two months before you start planning. Hey, well, yeah, I, 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 I at least looked at the date. You know, He's getting September the hang of this now. Like old pro. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna exactly. wait two months, but I won't be. Oh, oh you know, the, for the folks that can't make it this year, they can at least start planning for next year this way. Right, Absolutely. I'm sure Dave will be Dave will be live streaming. I'll be live streaming. So for people who you know aren't in the U.S. or can't make it, you know, at least you'll be able to get a glimpse of what's going on and all the fun that everybody's having and the interesting things that are going on and our investigations and things like that. And if nothing else, that'll draw you in because once you see the kind of activity and that goes on in this town, and as well as all of the the Paracon, you'll definitely want to make the next one. Got plenty of time at that exactly. point to plan, and I, and I, th- and I think we'll have to make uh, Paracon twenty eighteen shot glasses just for the speakers. Oh, oh yes, absolutely. Bless you, bless you. <laughs> and we have to get our annual picture of uh, me and Dave pulling the beard. Exactly. Oh, of course, we've you know, already that, talked you know, about that, that. Yes, that's that, that's a, that's a rich... thing now. Yeah, has to. Be. Yep. yep, that's a rich. So tradition. on that note, thank uh, thank you everyone for being here, folks. You've got to be at Paracon this year if you can make it. If you can't, again, we'll be live streaming. And we'll be making videos of all the lectures. And VIP Roundtable will be videoed, but it won't be released right away because of, uh, you know, the folks that are buying tickets. But don't miss out. It, it's it's going to be one hell of an event. And, Corey, take it away. All right. 
All right, I would like to thank our panel tonight, Dave Scott of Spaced Out Radio, Eric Markham of Spaced Out Radio's The Encounter Online, R. Keith Andrew of, of uh, Spaced Out Radio's The E.T. Encounter, and uh, our late joiner, uh, Christina George. Uh, Next week we will be off for Paracon. Uh, I invite everyone to come out to Paracon right here in Concrete, Washington. In two weeks we'll be back and discussing the benefits of Astral in the Paranormal Investigation on S4. At midnight, right after Spaced Out Saturday with Dave Cruz. And remember, Spaced Out Radio is seven nights a week. At 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, www.spacedoutradio.com. Good night, everyone, and keep your eyes to the skies. Progressive presents Mind Flowness with Flow. You are a mighty fortress of supreme knowledge. Progressive Direct has not only revealed their rates, but those of their competitors. If you were any more in the know, you would be drowning in, you know, the know. Compare Progressive Direct rates with competitors' rates because knowledge is power. Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy.